Good morning YouTube. Johnny Valentine here with Gain Solar. I'm out here at a secure location. It's dusty times where I'm working. Out here at a secure location uh, putting in a 4KW backup power system. This is this is a uh, 15 panels wired in strings of three on a Outback FM80 charge controller and an Outback Radian. And this guy's in a mountainous area. Good prepping. Good old prepping job here. He's got lots of firewood. Still a bit wet. Not split. He's got him a well pump with a pitless adapter. Just aching for a simple pump too. Just aching for one. Anyway, uh, take you inside show you where I've been working. I have not had an opportunity to shoot a lot of footage of this video, this job yet. But uh, I also did not put up the panels. This is a job for another company. There's a lot of companies out of Atlanta that sell battery jobs and hire me to come make sure they don't do it wrong. So, kind of interesting the way they did it. They actually piped the, all the home run strings down into this combiner but it almost meets rapid shutdown because it's they got to disconnect within 10 feet of the solar array. 10 feet is the crow flies. You think it's 10 feet or you think it's about 15? Close. got 12 feet across the top up there and about 8 feet coming down here. It's close to rapid shutdown. You know, truthfully, they need to get up there and put in one more stand flashing and strap that pipe to it. You know? I had looked at what they did. I just... This guy. This guy with the handlebars. You may have seen him in previous videos. Combiner box. Mm. Have to get on that. These combiner boxes are tight. There's our disconnects. Fuse disconnects. So there's a fuse disconnect for the output of the radian. There's one for the input of the radium because it's a grid tie inverter. You have to be able to disconnect the grid tie inverter, but you also have to be able to disconnect the secure load panel. So here's where I'm working right now. I'm in the guts of the radium. This is a 4048A. It doesn't have, you can see that the power module is not in the second part. There's a lightning arrestor in there instead. So I've got these 4048s are cool. They're just basically an 8048A missing one power module. Cool way to do it. It says 4048 right there, but it says 8048A there, which is weird. Um, you could just take, actually slap another power module in. You just would take it and pull it out and uh, or put another one right there and they connect right there and that would make it an 8048A, but it's not UL listed for that. Our panel is right, right above. You can see where we went through. Ran that big piece of snakiness in there. That's for all the circuits we're gonna not be able to pull out. Most of the circuits, you always want to get them. If you can pull them out of the panel, you pull them out of the panel. But if you can't, you just wire nut all the hots and a big neutral and a big ground, and you can move just the hot legs into your sub panel. There's my sub panel. This guy doesn't have very many loads he wants to run. He's pretty prepped, though. I mean, he's got him a dang 4x4 pallet of Mountain House. I wish I had this much food. He's got a big old pallet of food. He's got a nice little well here. Not a very big pressure tank, but I'm not gonna hate on him. Dang, he's got more food right here. I didn't even see this. He does have, he said he had a year of food. He probably does too. Um, usually preppers, you know, they don't have a well, but they got solar. This guy's, Pretty smart. He's got a bunch of rice. 
I don't know if that rice is in a good situation there. Might need to put it in some bu buckets with some gamma seal lids. Lots of TP. Probably don't have enough TP, you know. You can't have enough TP. Hey, look at all this bottled water. He's got a bunch of bottled water. A bunch more TP. Maybe he does have enough TP. He's got a good bit. I'm trying to decide. I'm auditing this guy's preps for my YouTube channel, Werner. Okay. Dang, he's got a buttload of water. You, you think? Huh? He is stocked and ready to roll. Like he has a buttload of water. Anyway, uh, this is the battery we're using. It's a deck of solar. And uh, I call them an 8A8D, but they're not. This is the 8G. There it is. There's the specs on this battery. I don't know if you can read that or not, but it's the 8G8D T975. This is a sealed battery. 225 amp hour to 20 hour rate. 265 amp hour to 100 hour rate. It's got the front terminals on it. And we'll actually have this battery, these are 12 volts, so there's going to be two strings of four wired in series and then parallel wired to make a 48 volt, roughly 450 amp hour battery sealed. So these are good batteries. This is a, although I did not sell this job, if it's a good job, it's a prepper job, I'll come do it. Make sure it goes in right. Because... This is that deck of battery rack. It's blowing their minds too. They're getting their minds blown. Uh, it didn't come with very good instructions, but it is blowing the mind. The simple-minded installer, panel hanger. Hey! Entiendes, entiendes lo que quiero que te hagas? Hacer unos soportes, dos soportes por la pipa. Sí, solo hágame dos porque sí, así está bien. Pasa, yeah. Solo, solo poner una, dos, dos son suficientes, creo. ¿Ah? Yeah. He's gonna run that ground all over the place. This guy's got a mini split too, so he's pretty well, well prepped in my opinion. Got a lot of infrastructure here. So I'll show you more when we get done. This GSLC comes pre-wired. It comes pre-wired for a, and so you kind of, kind of quick. But these things are really hard to wire, man. They're so yeah, tight. There's so much stuff in there. They're it's so ridiculous. tight. Ridiculous. It's just. That's, what it there's does. my hand in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, these things are ridiculously tight. Did have to slap a gutter. I only had a rain tight gutter on the truck, so I slapped it on there. There's the inner guts of the FM80, just about identical to the to its. This FM80 is the grandfather to the Midnight Classics. Same guy that designed them. Rumor has it designed these. So you know you got some aux terminals and battery positives and battery negatives and PV positives and PV negatives. And uh, this controller will do about 4,000 watts of solar at 48 volts, 5,000 watts at 60 volts. So when you got operating voltages of 57 volts, you're somewhere in between 4 and 5,000 watts of power you can do on these. Inverter, 4,000 watt radians, 30 amps of AC power, roughly 17 amps each leg. It's about like a Magnum, but a whole lot bigger. And uh, got some monster battery cables the dude ordered. So, anyway, folks, hope you're getting ready for the storm. Buy solar, but make sure you buy your food first. Johnny Valentine, gain solar. In a dusty basement full of food and solar. Just finished the install here. This is grid tie battery backup. It's a nice little system. Uh, this is one of those jobs where I just came in and did all the electrical on the battery side. You can see they opted to run a big pipe. Not the most beautiful thing, but it works. Uh, here's 15 panels. There's Solar World. I think there's Solar World 285s wired in strings of three. So there's five strings of three. A little over 
right at 4kw i think there's the combiner box which is on there's the crooked disconnects just slightly though mm. nice battery these are the 8g 8d t975s they are 225 amp hour and a 20 hour rate. Two banks. So he's got right at 450 amp hours of sealed battery. Um, here's the inverter. Critical load panel. He's got a nice little mini split. He's got his well running off of it. And uh, good little system here. This is a 4KW. Uh, Right now, you saw the panels were kind of shady, making 500 watts. And there's that Mate 3. Telling you what he's doing, got about 800 watts of load. Or no, he's got 0.5 kWf solar and 0 0.7, 0 0.8 of load. So he's using a little more power than he's making right now. So, grid tie battery backup, nice little 4KW radian, and uh, got her done. Took about three, three days to put this thing in and move all the circuits.